Okay, 10 minutes. Let's see if I can do this in 10 minutes. So far I've gone over three times. We'll try it again. Okay, so this is dedicated to two of my very close friends. Um, two people that are super close to me that have had experience with uh, domestic violence and something that they um, both have said to me is that they're still scared and they're afraid that it's gonna happen again. And I was too. And part of that is that they don't, they don't have any idea of what to look for um, before it gets physically violent. So this is about warning signs. I could talk about this for hours. Um, so I'm gonna try to make it quick. Um, usually, ZV relationships don't start out violent. They start out sweet and cute, and pretty much like every other relationship, until a certain point. And then they start to get pushy and kind of like, please be with me, I love you, I need you, I can't do anything without you, be with me, only me right now. That's kind of scary sometimes. Um, jealousy happens. Jealousy is normal to a certain, a certain extent. If they are jealous because they saw you talking to somebody for five minutes, that's not good. That's not healthy. Controlling you, if you're being interrogated about where you were, why you were there, who you were with, um, if they're checking the mileage on your car, if, if they keep all the money from you, if you don't have any access to the money, if when you do get money you have to bring back all the receipts every time, that's also not healthy. Um, if you have to ask permission to go anywhere, to be seen with anybody, to hang out with anybody, that's also not healthy. Um, isolation is a big, big thing that happens. You get cut off from your family and your friends and they take away your phone and your car and you can't keep a job, they prevent you from keeping a job. That's so dangerous because when it gets physically violent, you will have nobody to help you. You will have no way of contacting anybody. If they are, if you are being isolated, you're, you're in an abusive relationship. It may not be physically abusive yet, but it probably will eventually get there. Call a hotline, call the police, get out of that because it's going to get dangerous and I don't want that to happen to anybody. I will definitely put links in the description of websites and I'll put hotlines. Um, I'll put a bunch of information so that if you somehow see this and think, huh, yeah, that's my situation, you'll, you'll know a little bit of like what to do from there. Um, if you are blamed for your partner's mistakes, and if they say things like, I wouldn't get so pissed off if you didn't fill in the blank, um, that's really unhealthy. You, something my mom tells me all the time is, you don't have the power to control the way somebody else is feeling. They choose to react the way that they react. If somebody is blaming you for the way that they are feeling, that's unhealthy. Um, cruelty to children, animals, anybody else really, even if they were a kid and they were like, oh yeah, when we were little we used to beat up our dog. That's a big red flag. That shows that they don't really have, they don't really care what happens to others. You don't have empathy, and that's very dangerous. Uh, um, verbal abuse, just being criticized, or when they say really horrible things, they, calling you names, degrading you, swearing at you. It's verbal abuse. And 
one of the really sad things about that is if you hear it enough, you will believe it and you'll have no self-esteem and you will believe all of that and you will let them do whatever they want to you because you think you deserve it. They brainwash you pretty much. And that's so, so sad to me. That breaks my heart because nobody deserves that. Another form of verbal abuse is if you've opened up to them about something in your past um, and they use that against you. That's 9,000% not okay for anybody to do ever. And if you're somebody who's done that, then stop. That's a, that's a, a really shitty thing to do. If somebody's trusted you with information like that, you need to be respectful and you need to be there for them, but you also need to let them know that you're not going to use that against them. And then you need to follow through on that. Because it's one thing to say that, but you have to actually do it. You can't use that against them. Um, criminal history to hitting or violence or assault can be a red flag. It's not always because sometimes it was an accident, sometimes it's false accusation. There are a lot of reasons why that can't always be the most, that's not, that is not a very super reliable thing. Now obviously if they have a criminal history and it's like 20 different charges for assault or battery against different people or even the same person at different times, it's unlikely that they were um, charged with something they didn't do that many times. So, you know, I'd say like two or three charges is enough to maybe just be more cautious, especially if they were recent. Um, yeah, just be, be cautious, trust your gut. If you feel uncomfortable, do something about that. Um, threats of violence. If somebody tells you that they're gonna hurt you so that you will do something for them, that's, that's abusive. If they then later tell you, I didn't really mean it, or I was just kidding, but you know they weren't, you'll know. You'll know when it's a joke and you'll know when it's not. It's not funny and it's not safe because that usually turns into actual violence. That turns into how come you didn't have dinner ready when I got home? And then you're being beaten up. Then afterwards, they will come back and they'll say that they're so sorry and then it will never happen again. You can't believe that because it's not true. They'll do it again. They aren't actually sorry and it'll happen again. You don't deserve that. Even if you believe you 